Good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk with Lakshmi, a show about us, our people, our community, our culture, our experiences. And viewers, about a year ago, we did a story on Hari Ramanan, who was brutally murdered in Garden of Eden, Guyana. We interviewed his brother, Dio Ramanand, and sister-in-law, Rihanna Ramanand, where they told a story of his life, memories, and of course, about that brutal murder. We're here to speak back with the family to find out how far along we've come with his case. Dio, welcome to Let's Talk with Lakshmi. So Dio, I know it's been about one year now since your brother passed away. Has there been any updates with the murder case? Well, first of all, I, I want to thank you, Lakshmi. I want to thank Rihanna. I want to thank the people of Guyana. And I want to thank all the people in New York who give us so much support during my brother's death and murder. Um, the update right now is that no one was arrested, no one was convicted. Um, people uh, were, he they were held and released, you know, but I can assure you one thing, we're going to have an arrest. If it's not this year, if it's not next year, but we will have an arrest because we're going to pursue this. Despite all the oppositions we get from the politicians, the embassy and all these different people, but we're going to pursue this. Now, let's go back to the story a little bit about <laughs> Harry. Tell our viewers again exactly how Harry was murdered in Garden of Eden. Okay, uh, Harry is a businessman and he went back because he had a liquor store and he had a citrus farm. Um, and he went there, he spent about three years. We tried to get him back. Um, I went back, um, I invited him last year to come to train that carnival with myself and Rihanna, but he had about five dogs and he didn't want to come and he had his business and he stayed there. What happened was because he didn't come to, to Trinidad, myself and Rihanna went to Guyana and I spent a week with him, you know, that was in March last year. Then he got uh, killed in July the 7th of last year. Now, I know Harry loved dogs, like you said, mm -hmm. and I believe you guys come from a large family. How many siblings are you guys? Uh, 11 brothers and sisters. How is everyone dealing with the murder? I mean, it's been about a year now. How is everyone dealing with not finding the murderer, not knowing exactly what's going on? How, how is the family dealing with this? Not well, not well. Um, the family right now, they grew up in Garden of Eden, okay. where he was murdered. Everybody's scared to go back. They want to sell the place and all of this, you know? But listen, uh, not, because, not because you kill our brother, we're gonna just cut and run. First of all, we're going to maintain the place. Then uh, while we're there, we're going to pursue, you know, who killed Harry. You know, the family is not taking it well. I got two sisters in Texas. They're not doing well with this. I got one in, in Florida. Um, they're not doing well. And I got my older sister. She's holding up because we got to do the year work. And uh, we're giving her all the support. Now, when is the year work? It's going to be June the 1st. Now, Dio, I know that Harry was an American citizen. So I'm just curious to know, what assistance are you getting right now with the American government, considering that he is an American citizen, he's gone abroad, he was there for a while, living there for a while. What kind of assistance are you getting? Well, he was an American citizen. He voted in America. Okay. He paid taxes in America. Right. When he got killed, uh, we contacted the American embassy in Guyana. Um, they came, they closed the casket, and they said they'll monitor the investigation to find the murderer, the, whoever killed him. Um, so I said, fine. Uh, we, they told us that in July. Myself and Rihanna went back and met with an American worker in the, in the embassy. And uh, we asked her, what is going on? Because you say you're going to monitor the situation. She said, we did what we had to do, and all you have to do is to get a lawyer. You know, my brother was an American citizen. A lot of people are under the misconception that if you're an American citizen, you go to any part of the world, you go to the embassy, they're going to help you. But let me tell you something. That's a bunch of baloney, you know? Um, I, I told her, if, if, if my... I, I told her my brother vote. She was cold. She shouldn't even have that job. I need somebody to be sympathetic. Right. Here it is, I'm going back to Guyana to, to go to my consulate 
to get some help. And she's telling me, go get a lawyer. If my brother, if my brother was in Benghazi or an American citizen get killed in Benghazi, the FBI would be in, in Benghazi and the, the Congress would have been investigating. But in Guyana, they look at you like a peasant, American peasant. You know, there's, there, there, there's a caste system mm -hmm. when it comes, you know, to who you know and that kind of thing. So in Guyana with the police, what are the police saying about your case? The police, mm -hmm. uh, we, um, I sent a certified letter to the crime chief and I sent one to the Home Affairs Minister, Nandalal. I got a friend of mine contact Nandalal and he said he'll get back to him. He never called. So we didn't get no assistance from them. Um, I, uh, I did some groundwork on my own and I checked with people in Guyana. My brother, when he was killed, his gun was taken, his weeding machine was taken. Um, I got a list of uh, the guy who has the gun, who has the weeding machine, and other people who were involved in this murder. I give all of that to the police, and, and there is still no arrest. It, uh, there's a lot of corruption going on in Guyana right now, and it seems like the criminal got more connection with the police than the law-abiding citizen. Now, I remember a year ago when we spoke about the story, Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that there was, I'm not sure if it was a neighbor or a young girl that had known about a story about some money that was hidden. Right, that was the Amerindian girl. What came about that? That was the Amerindian girl. Mm -hmm. uh, she came over um, when we were there uh, for the funeral, and she said Harry told her that he had 1.5 million Guyana dollars, you know, and we should look uh, in the house for it. Um, we didn't find no money. No money. Uh, we asked the police to question her, you know, to do an investigation where, you know, she probably tells somebody and they tell somebody else, so they probably come to rob him for that money. But the police never did nothing with her. Now, for people who are going back home, you know, going to visit Guyana, maybe for the first time after X amount of years, or maybe for the first time ever, it could be someone who was just born here. What advice would you give to someone that's traveling back home? Well, if you're going to Guyana, if you're going back after long being out of the country, what I advise you to do is to go with people, you know, who've been traveling back and forth. You know, despite there's a lot of crimes going on, Americans getting killed, regular people getting killed, foreigners getting killed in Guyana. Um, you can still have a good time, you know, because on our last trip in March this year, uh, two, 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 2013, we had, we had a couple from Schenectady who never went back for 29 years. They came back with us. They stayed with us at the house where my brother was murdered. And they had a great time. They had a great time. But we had people. We had, people, we had other people in the area come over to their house, you know, to keep a watch, you know, to see that, you know, that there wasn't a car park or people's suspicious, suspicious movement and that kind of thing. But I'll tell people, go to Guyana, go to Guyana, you know, but you have to be careful and you have to dress down. You know, a lot of people go to Guyana, they, they feel that, you know, uh, they can wear the jewelry, they can act flashy and all of that. That's, you're targeting the thieves that are watching you, you know. Now, I know you had a reward for any information on Harry's death. Right. Is that still Well, uh, we, we are planning, we are planning to put a million dollars, a million Guyana dollars up as a reward. We got to get clearance from the police department and all of that. We were waiting to hear what the police, what they're doing. But if we don't get nothing, uh, no, no resolution or anything soon, we'll have to go that route. But you know, we just can't say, hey, here's a million dollars. The police got to clear that. You know, so we got, we'll work with them. Now, are you following up every month? Does the police call you at all from Guyana, or is it just you always have to call and follow up with them? I met with, uh, with, with uh, one of the commanders in Brigdam about okay. three different times. I give him a lot of information about who we suspect and all of that. He said he was going to do an investigation. They never call me. The police, the, the police never call me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it seemed like when you go there, it's that you got to... Uh, stay, wait, 
And um, it's like you have to beg. You know, some, if your brother got killed, he's an American, you go down there. And, um, and you, you encouraging people to go back. We were thinking of going back to Guyana and living Guyana, you know? And now how do you feel? Um, despite, despite my brother got killed there, mm -hmm. you know, um, I would still go back, you know, but uh, to live there, you know, uh, let's say 12 months a year, um, I, got to get, I got to get permission to get a gun and I got to get protection and all of that. Now, do you think you or your wife, Rahana, would be scared to go and live back in Guyana? Well, we're scared. We're scared. We go back there, we're scared. Mm -hmm. The bottom line of it all, when we sit on the veranda, we, we see a car park. You know what I mean? You got to be careful. Are they watching us? Right. You know, we got to ask people in Guyana to come and stay with us. You know, um, uh, we, were, we, were, we were trying to get people, uh, we felt a little comfortable, but we had people that we were going to pay armed security to come and stay with us. Mm -hmm. You know, so the fear is there. My brother got killed. My brother got murdered. Then the point is this, after he got murdered uh, a month after, about half a mile, um, another guy got murdered there too. I was about to say, I heard there was another murder. Yeah. Do you think that murders are at all connected? Well, the bottom line of it all, uh, my brother was bunged, his, his hands were tied, you know, and uh, he was stabbed. The, the guy, that, the other guy that was killed uh, was murdered. He was, a, he was a security guard at a Chinese factory. And what happened, uh, they tied him up, but they beat him, you know. And what happened was myself and Rihanna went to Guyana, we located the family because we saw some sim similarities with Harry's murder and this guy. And we talked to the family. They said they're going to meet with us and give us some more information so we could, we could look and say, well, hey, there's a lot of people getting murdered and the police need to do more. But the family, the people are scared. Everyone's scared. The people in Guyana are scared. I got people who know the killers, who know what went on, but said, they said, look, we can't come and tell you. They're scared for their own life. Yeah, because they said, when you're gone, what's going to happen to us? You know? So do you believe that your brother's case will ever be resolved? It will. Okay. It will. You know, the American embassy, right? They're not backing us. They're monitoring the situation. What are they monitoring? Do they, have, do they, do they arrest anybody? The police department, mm -hmm. uh, Silal, the crime chief, right? Nandalal, the, uh, the home affairs. Are they doing any, anything? They want people to come back to Guyana. They got all these ads, come back, come back, come back. But what, are you, what are you going to do? People. What are you going to do? We go spend money. Every time we go, we spend, we spend money down there. And the bottom line of it all, I just, I just took two, two, a couple, 29 years after they went back, they had a great time. They want to tell their friends to come back, right? But what happened? Had one of those people got killed, you know, my neck would have been cut in New York, you know? Because they, they said your brother got killed, then you take these people to get killed too. You know? Mm -hmm. So, look, I still love Guyana. I always love like Guyana. But the bottom line of it all, we need prote protection. Two months ago, after my mother's hospitalization, the doctors wanted to put her in hospice. And I'm like, you know, they deemed her terminal. And I saw Mr. Takur, I think the founder, on TV. And um, he was advertising this Indian community in Kings Harbor. It's a great Indian community where uh, my mother feels at home and she expresses her happiness to me whenever I come. I know when I come, I feel happy. I stay a couple and I see everybody and I'm so happy. I brought my mother here like a month and a half ago and I haven't regretted my decision. It's one of the best decisions I've made for my mother. It's a home away from home. When thinking of shipping a barrel, box, or sending money back home, think of the name you can trust. Think Lapakan. Lapakan has been serving our community for over 25 years, and a significant portion of every dollar spent at Lapakan goes to work in our community here and back home. Together, we are making a difference. For your shipping and money transfer needs, call Lapakan. Lapakan, the name we can trust. 
for all your special private and professional occasions. No event is too big or too small. We cover it all. Contact the professional source for all your party or special occasion needs. We have you covered at Star Party Rentals. Call us, 516-239-2242. Please mention Let's Talk With Luxury for discount pricing. Elegant Floral Design. We can help you beautify your event. No occasion is too big or too small. We specialize in floral decor and party planning for every event. Please call 718-322-9786. Please use promo code LUXMI for a discount. Rockaway Gold Buyers and Pawn Shop. Gold prices are on the rise. Visit Rockaway Gold Buyers to get the highest price on your jewelry today. Also, ask about our layaway plans. Also, pay all your bills with Payomatic. That's right. Pay your phone and cable, Macy's and car payment, mortgage and credit cards, and many more. We also do wire transfers and money orders with Western Union. Need cash? Get a four-month loan now. Mention code word LUXMI to receive no interest for the first month on any loan up to $500. Located conveniently on 10705 Rockaway Boulevard. Call and visit us today, 718-480-8343. Rockaway Gold Buyers and Porn Shop. Dear friends, the family of the late Harry Ramanand who passed away approximately one year ago, continue to feel the pains of grief over his untimely passing. He may not be with us physically, but exist on a higher plane, in peace with the Almighty. May God grant his soul eternal peace, and may justice come to fruition through his grace. We will always love you. What would you like to tell the police department or the government about this case and what you would really like to see happen within the next three months? Well, in the next three months, look, uh, if you look at the newspaper, a lot of Guyanese been going back home and they're getting killed. Some getting robbed, some getting killed by the family, some getting murdered and all of these things. Uh, a lot of foreigners, they, they get in target. The police need to do more. Uh, to protect the people, and uh, you're going to have tourism going to boom. It's going to take off. You know, you look at uh, you look at what's happening in the whole East Bank, East Coast. Uh, look at Diamond, for example. You got the the, the 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 hospital. You got the banks. You got everything. That's a, that's another city. But the bottom line of it all, if people are going to come to Guyana and get killed, you know what I mean? What's going to happen? Why would they come? You know, my brother, my brother, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I hear that they arrest somebody, you know? And um, look, if the police is not going to do nothing, I'm going to, I'm going to buy ads. I'm going to, I talked to Glenn Lal already in Kaitura News, you know what I mean? And I'm going to tell him, I said, look, I want somebody to listen to me. Um, Stabrook did a front page ad on the murder. Glenn Lal did another front page, and I want to do some follow-up. And, but I'm not going to sit down and say, I want you just to talk about my brother. I want you to talk about the safety and people getting killed in Guyana, you know. And the bottom line of it all, I will tell everybody to come back to Guyana, visit Guyana. I took people back uh, a couple of months ago after 29 years. And I got a whole bunch of friends who want to come back. Right. But the bottom line of it all. They need protection they and need, security. Yes. You know, the police need to do more. The embassy, the embassy, the American embassy need to let the world know what their role. You know, we're paying taxes. When we go there, you know what I mean? You know, 
I feel that um, I didn't get no justice from the police. I said, okay, I'm going to go in. I'm going to go into the embassy. I'm going to hear something. I had 5,000 flyers printed up about my brother's debt, front line, everything. And I said, let me hold, let me hold this before I, I put it in the, on the streets. And when I go to the embassy and I walk away, and when she said, go get a lawyer, you know what I mean? And, and, and you couldn't even offer me no advice. But why would you need a lawyer? You know, they said they can't do nothing else. If you want to find, find, find who killed your brother, get a lawyer to do the investigation. You know? So my thing right now is that I'm going, I'm going, to, I'm dealing, I'm going to the people in Guyana and I'm asking for help. I'm, I'm going, and if I go door to door, uh, different areas, but I'm going to, I'm going to get some information, but it's, it's going to be solved. Okay, so here we have a brother that's willing to go door to door, yep. country to country, state to state, even here in the United States of America, to find the killer of his brother. Well, let me say this, right? I, I spent 35 years, 35, 35 years working for the Office of Mental Health. Do case management. I, I go fight for the rights of patients who are in Rackers Island to get help for that little uh, help for rehabilitation for mental illness. I go to the shelters, right, and help them in the shelters. I go them. I take. I go uh, in 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 the, the homes. Help them. I'm I'm taking I'm taking about 35 patients camping in Connecticut in June. You know. So the bottom line of it all, if I can fight for the uh, underdogs. In America, you know the the people that the people that uh, everybody give up on, mm. the people with uh, dual diagnosis, and um, I accustomed to fighting for them. I met with a rapist today. I took him out to lunch, you know. Mm. So so dealing with my brother's situation, other pe people's situation, I'm going to fight. We can find a solution. Considering you're in mental health, when the police find your brother's murderer. And if you come face to face with his murderer, what would you say to him? The bottom line of it all, I'll tell him. I said, look, I leave you in the hands of God. You know, uh, what you sow, you shall reap. You know, uh, I let the justice system take care of that. Would you wish the death penalty on him? Uh, I, I don't believe in, death, in the death penalty. You know. What punishment would you wish on him? Well, uh, uh, a life imprisonment. Okay. And let the prisoners deal with him. So, Dio, it's about one year. I know the family will be having the one-year memorial service for your brother. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your brother, some good memories of him. What will we be you know, thinking of him on the one-year work? What type of good memories would you guys be reminiscing on? Well, uh, he, uh, he helped uh, my father and he helped the brothers and sisters uh, with the business to, the, to bring it up to a standard where, uh, you know, in the 70s, it was kind of difficult to get uh, a lot of kids from the country to go to high school. Mm -hmm. And he was there to see they go to school, to check the homework and all of that. Uh, he went to GOC in Georgetown and uh, in the 70s, uh, because he did farming and business, the government of Guyana uh, asked him to go to Florida to do a seminar in agriculture. He spent about two months there uh, for the seminar, and then he went back to Guyana. They offered him a, a job, but he said no. He was staying with business with my father. Um, and around 1979, he, uh, he came to America, and uh, he spent over uh, 20 years in America working, but he was back and forth in Guyana. Um, my mother died in 86, and uh, he had a green card then, and he was supposed to leave Guyana because you, gotta, you can't spend more than six months. Okay. And uh, when my mother died, his time was just up. And he decided to say, if I got to give up my green card, I give up my green card, but I have to be there with my mother. Okay. When he came, came after the funeral to New York, the uh, immigration uh, detained him, and he had to go before a judge and all of that uh, to explain why he stayed out so long. You know, um, he, he, he was very compassionate with brothers, sisters, 
nephews, nieces. Um, and one thing about a lot of people would come back and say, um, Harry got to give me that recipe for that or fish, fish. fish. <laughs> you know, he can cook a fish, and, 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 but the recipe. And you know one thing, Rihanna asked for the recipe. Uh, so many people asked for the recipe, and nobody never uh, got still the recipe. A secret. It's still a secret, okay. you know. So out of the 11, where did he fall out of the 11 kids? He was, he was, the, he was the fourth. He was the fourth. So being that he's such a good cook, I know <laughs> summer's coming up. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of events that are going to be happening outdoors. Mm -hmm. If Harry was here, what do you think he would be doing this summer? He would be cooking some fish. Cooking some fish. Yes. Cooking some fish. And uh, what he would do, uh, anytime any relatives go to Guyana or somebody coming back from Guyana, he would always uh, fix some seasoning, his special seasoning. But... Um, when it comes to his dogs, mm -hmm. he loves his dogs, you know. Um, I, I, I was in Guyana in March, and I, uh, I said, uh, listen, me and you have to go out, and we're going to hang out a little bit. Um, so he said, well, uh, meet me. We left together, but I had to see Rihanna's father. So he went to Georgetown, so I met him by the fire station. I said, let's go out. He sat down and said, well, look, I got my dog food, and I got to go home and take the food. And that was, that was the trip. That was the hanging out for me and him, you know? Um, but other than that, you know, we sit back and we, 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 we had a good time while we were together, you know? And I spent one week. I, had, I don't know why, why it happened, but uh, God has a way of putting things together. You know, why did I... Uh, I went to Trinidad. Rihanna came with me to Guyana. She left and come back. Then I spent a week with Harry, me and him together, bonding. You know, and then the next thing, you know, is that I heard he got murdered. You know, so you ask why? why? You, you know why? You know, I never, I never really sit down um, and spent a week with him. You know, I told him, I said, look, you know, the bottom line of it all, if you like Diana so much, you're 61. You're 61. You work in America. This year in June. You're going to be 62. What you're going to do, collect your Social Security, right? Collect your Social Security and travel back and, and, forth, back and forth, you know? But, you know, God had other plans. Other plans yeah. Do you tell me growing up with Harry, what is the funnest memory you had with him growing up as brothers? The, the, the funniest. Something fun or something naughty you guys may have done as boys in Guyana. The, the funniest thing was that... Um, before we moved to Garden of Eden, we used to live in Campbellville. Okay. And what happened was, uh, one day, he took my father's uh, 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 shaving set, and he put the soap, and he was shaving when he was about uh, eight, nine years old. Did you he know? didn't have any hair then? He didn't have no hair, but you know, he just wanted to follow, you know? Oh. Um, myself and him, we went to Puerto Rico. We went to Puerto Rico, and we get caught in Hurricane Hugo. So we were there, we were stranded for like about four days, and uh, we had a ball of a time in Puerto Rico, you know, mm -hmm. despite the hurricane, despite um, giving up our hotel, sleeping in a car, bathing at the beach, coming to the airport for confirmed flights, and then you don't have no flights leaving, but we had a ball of a time. So Dio, if there's one thing that you would like our viewers to know about Harry, what would that be? Uh, he was warm, he was good, he was sharing, he was caring. Um, he had uh, a lot of oranges in his farm. And what he would do is that um, the people that work in the community, mm -hmm. uh, he would share oranges to them. Um, I went to the motor vehicle in um, Georgetown in uh, December. Okay. And one of the guys said... Um, he said, your brother bring oranges for me, uh -huh. you know? And um, he said, uh, that was the kind of guy he is. I, um, I saw Dr. Guy Lowe, you know, by Georgetown Hospital. Mm -hmm. And he said, Harry uh, always bring um, Pierre something from the farm. Uh, the guards over at um, where, where, where he live, mm -hmm. they, uh, they'll come over and they said, Harry always offer us something. And they said, I don't know who and why, 
they would kill uh, such a kind person, you know. Um, in terms of his clothing, he would, every time he go, he'll pack up so much of clothes and he'll just share it. Everything he gets is shared to people. It's very sharing and very yeah, giving. Yeah, you know. And um, that was the kind of person he was. He was a giving person, sharing person, kind person. Awesome. You know, at his funeral, you had all kind of races, mm -hmm. you know, where you talk about cultural, or cultural. he's a man of culture. You had, you had, um, you had uh, the Amerindian girl crying. You had the Chinese lady crying. You had uh, the, the black girl said, they did, like him fix his face, right? Fix his face because everybody loves him, you know? He was that kind of person. Well, Dale, I want to thank you very much for coming on to Let's Talk with Lakshmi and sharing your story once again about Harry's murder. We will indeed keep him in our prayers, our hearts, and our thoughts. And again, we will definitely follow up. We're hoping that you will get some results from this story from our viewers who are watching Let's Talk with Lakshmi. Again, if you have any information on the murder case of Harry Ramanand, in Garden of Eden, Guyana, please contact the local police department. Again, there is a reward for information leading up to the capturing of this murderer. Well, viewers, thank you for watching Let's Talk with Lakshmi. I'll see you all again next week, same time, same place. It's a date. Let's talk. Dear friends, the family of the late Harry Ramanand, who passed away approximately one year ago, continue to feel the pains of grief over his untimely passing. He may not be with us physically, but exist on a higher plane, in peace with the Almighty. May God grant his soul eternal peace, and may justice come to fruition through his grace. We will always love you.